Hi everyone and welcome back to Art a la carte. And in this episode of Color Pencils 101, we're going to be talking about how to take care of your color pencils, how to sharpen your pencils, and a little bit about what kind of paper you want to use. If you missed the first episode, I'll put a link to that in the description below so you can go ahead and check that out. And make sure that you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of the others. Now that you've decided what kind of pencils you want to go with, whether you're going to go with the less expensive kind of student grade or if you want to invest in a more professional grade brand of colored pencils, I want to talk to you about how to take care of them and how to store them. The thing to know about a color pencil is what's going on on the inside of the color pencil. Understanding what's going on inside of a color pencil is really going to help you know how to take care of it. And to do that, let's flip this over to look at the end of the color pencil. This right here tells you exactly what's going on inside. The color pencil is a core, kind of a cylinder tube of color and surrounded by wood. So when you put this into the pencil sharpener, it shaves that off and sharpens it, brings it to a point but this part here is running all the way through this pencil. And this is very, very fragile. If you push too hard on this, the point breaks off. If you hit it against something, this is going to break. But it also applies to all of this inside here. The wood helps to kind of buffer that and protect it from a lot of the hits and dings on there. But if you're not careful, you're gonna end up breaking the core of the color inside your color pencils. And you'll know that's happened when you go to sharpen your pencil and the lead just falls out. And though there's really not a surefire method to protect your color pencils always, um, there are a couple things you can do to help keep them safe a little bit more. As I've told you, I use Prismacolor color pencils and they are a little expensive. So um, I don't like to replace them when they get broken up. So I take super duper good care of my pencils. Um, but there has been the occasion that I will drop them on the floor and uh, it's just horrible. So you wanna try not to lay them on places that they're gonna roll off a table and fall. Um, just, I, I almost treat them as if they're made of glass. So when I pick them up and I work with them, I don't just throw them in a box or a bin with all the color pencils. I always place them back down, but just keeping it from bumping or banging in against each other is really gonna help not to break those color pencils. So what do I use to store my color pencils in? First method I use probably was one of the best for keeping them safe. So this was the first thing that I used to store my color pencils in was this carousel. And it has all these little different sized holes, um, perfect for holding art supplies and things like that. And it just tucks those right in there. And I actually really, really like this because you can spin it and see all of your colors and it's, it just works really, really well. And I really, really like this carousel. The thing is, is it's ginormously huge. And it just kind of, I don't know, I probably will end up going back to it later. But because my studio is really, really small, I couldn't just have this gigantic thing taking up half of my desk. So then I switched to this little drawer thing here and I just had all the colors in there. And that was fun and I just had this in a little drawer under my desk. So I just pulled this little uh, drawer out and I'd sit here and, and all the color pencils were in there and so I could kind of go through them. The thing was is it was sometimes hard to find the colors I wanted to and I was constantly having to dig through them and I didn't like doing that because when I dug through them they're hitting each other and I'm paranoid about them breaking so I thought that's probably not going to work best for me. So then I went to my local store, it wasn't even an art store, it was just a regular store and I went into the home beauty section and they had these makeup cups and so I found this makeup cup it's actually three little cups put together and um, it was on clearance and then 40% off of the clearance price so it was really really inexpensive and it was pretty and I liked it and it kind of went with my decor a little bit and so I put them in here and I think I probably will go back and buy one more so that I'll have six containers this is just three um, to be able to separate my colors out a little bit more. So the way I separated my colors is I had my blues and greens, grays and whites in this one, purples, pinks and reds in here, and oranges, yellows, browns, tans, flesh tones are all in this one. Um, so if I went ahead and got six, I could do blues in one container, greens in one container, pinks and reds in one container, purples in another, yellows and oranges, and then browns and blacks in the last one. So it'll be a little bit easier to find them. But for right now, this works really, really well for me. It keeps them upright so I can see them really nicely, keeps them secure, they're not falling over all the time. 
and it's fairly easy to find the colors that I need. So this is my container that I use right now. But really whatever you choose to use um, to hold your color pencils in is fine as long as it works for you. The biggest question that I have from people is how to sharpen color pencils. For a long time I've just used a handheld pencil sharpener where you, know, you just hold it and you ch -ch 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 and it shaves it off um, because an electric pencil sharpener was really expensive. But then I began finding that more times than not every time I would go to sharpen my pencil the lead would break and I was thinking that somehow my pencils had gotten damaged and that they were broken up through the core and I was really getting frustrated and really almost considered giving up colored pencils because every time I bought a colored pencil and I went to sharpen it it just, they would just always seem to be breaking and I was so frustrated. And so finally went into my art store and talked to them and they suggested to get an electric pencil sharpener to go ahead and invest in that. So this is the unit here. This is how it came minus the Jasmine sticker. This is actually a sticker that one of you guys sent me. I put it on my, on my little pencil sharpener. I think I'm excited I'm going to start putting all the stickers that you guys give me. I'm going to start putting my favorites on my pencil sharpener and just decorating it. But this is it. It plugs into an outlet and it has a little drawer right here. It's probably very full of, of pencil shavings because I have not cleaned it out in a while because I wanted to show you. Ooh, yes. It's very full of pencil shavings. Probably more full than it should have been. <laughs> probably should have emptied this a while ago. But as you can see, it puts all of the pencil shavings in here. All right, so if you look in here, you'll see this is where you put in your pencil. And I'm not gonna do that right now because I don't want this turning on. But as you can see way down in there, pencil goes inside there and right there is the little thing that sharpens it. So there's actually several blades in there that sharpen it very gently and brings it into this nice little point. So you want to try not to let them get that full. Also as you're sharpening if you have a brand new set of pencils and you're sharpening you know 20 or 30 pencils at one time go ahead and feel the back of this and once it starts getting hot go ahead and let it rest. Don't let it get overheated. Um, when I did buy this um, of course all my pencils were dull. I began sharpening them and about halfway through I thought I killed the unit. I thought I burnt the motor out because it stopped working. It just got too hot and will automatically this brand automatically turns off when it gets too warm. So let me show you how it works. So you take the pencil, put it right in there. And there it comes out. It's nice and noisy and all that. You know, it doesn't require any pressure. You just stick it in there and kind of just hold it so it doesn't spin and it just sharpens it away. So, and I think I've only had a lead break inside this like twice. And I've had this sharpener for about six months now. So very, very good investment, especially if you're going to want to do color pencils or even if you're just having graphite or just regular drawing pencils, if you can get an electric pencil sharpener, I highly recommend it. Nice and sharp. Now let me just say, you can use whatever kind of paper you want, but know that the different kinds of paper that you use are going to have a different effect. Um, so these are just some suggestions. So here I have just a uh, pad of Strathmore drawing paper and uh, I find this is just really good just to practice with. It's not super expensive um, and just has just regular drawing paper in there. I would recommend not drawing on newsprint um, just because it's a very thin paper and you're going to find that your pencils are just going to break right through the paper. A couple things you're going to want to look for when you pick drawing paper. The first thing you're going to look for is the weight of your paper. So this paper here is a 64 pound weight. That doesn't mean that this pad weighs 64 pounds. Um, it just means the, uh, the thickness of your paper. So you want a paper that has a little bit of, of a weight to it um, where it's not super thin. So 64 is a great weight to have for any kind of drawing, whether it's colored pencils, which obviously they're advertising this is great for colored pencils, or just whether gra regular graphite pencils, um, I would choose something that has a 64 pound weight. The other one is you're going to want to feel your paper. And this one says it has a medium surface. And this means it has a medium tooth. Now you might hear this a lot in art talk. You know, artists use a lot of art words and they'll talk about the tooth of their paper. And tooth of the paper means the texture of how, how rough or smooth paper is. The more tooth that paper has, the rougher that paper is going to feel. So if you run your fingers across this paper here, you're gonna find for the most part, it's, it's smooth. There's a little bit of texture to that, but not super bad. 
Uh, with colored pencils, I would recommend a paper that has a lower tooth. The more tooth, the more it's going to be difficult to fill in those little white gap spaces, and we'll get into talking about that later. Um, so just try out a bunch. I, I find I like to practice with this stuff, but when I actually go to do a finished piece, I usually stick with a different brand. So this is the type of paper that I like to use if I'm doing a finished piece. So it's a Bristol board, which is a higher weight. So this is a hundred pound weight. And this one I like because it comes in two different types. It has a smooth, the first 12 sheets of this pad is a smooth paper. So if you feel it, it is very, very smooth in comparison to the drawing paper. But if I go to the back of the book, it has a rougher tooth to it as well. The front part of the paper I use for color pencils and the back part of the pad I use for watercolor actually. Once you have your pencils and your paper ready to go, you are ready to do something. So I, I didn't want to end this tutorial with um, uh, just a bunch of talking and not having something that you can do as an action, something you can practice with. So this is what I want to leave you guys with, is to now begin to know your tools. You have your paper, you have your color pencils, now just begin playing with them. Um, a thing that you don't want to do is something that a lot of uh, people do when they grab art supplies for the first time, which is they just simply think that this color pencil is just meant just to, you know, just color with, you know, blah, 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 I'm going to color a heart, blah, 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 and this is what it looks like, and there's just one kind of color, it's red, and you're just going to color your heart, and red means red, and there we go, that's red. If you're using this with, with one type of pressure, and I probably will get, I'm definitely going to be talking a lot more about pressure throughout the whole tutorial, because color pencils is all about layering and pressure and and how light or dark the color is. Um, so don't just think I have to uh, draw with a color pencil with this hard pressure. And a lot of beginning artists do that. They'll just grip the pencil with this death grip and they'll draw their picture. And because I think it has like this force to it and they're confident and all that. And they think if they do this little do, 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 that that's not drawing. Um, but they have these gouging lines. In fact, you can run your finger over the drawing and you can feel where the lead is. You know you have gouged your paper to death. Uh, color pencils are all about pressure. So find out what your lightest tone of your pencil can be. When you are barely touching the paper, what does that look like? Find out if you can get that to fade out even into white. Find out if you can get that to go into a nice dark gradient. We did this a little bit with watercolor. We talked about gradient and getting your watercolors to go from a dark, dark color into a light. And so the same thing applies with this color pencil is getting that, that control. Um, it's kind of like if you had a sword and you only swung it one way. Um, yeah, you'd, you'd get one kind of swing, but you'd miss out on so many other things that your sword could do. Know how hard you have to push your pencil to get this tone, or this tone, or this tone, or this tone. How hard do you have to push your pencil so that you don't see any light in your paper? And we'll be talking about why there's these little light specks. We're going to talk about that in the next lesson. I can't tell you how excited I am for the next lesson because this is when we really get to start doing stuff. I had to make sure that everyone understood about the tools and what they needed so I wouldn't be constantly having to answer questions about what color pencils I'm using, what kind of paper I'm using, blah, 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 blah. So I need to get that out of the way first before we can really get into some of the good stuff. So make sure you stick around for our next tutorial on that. Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on the next video or any of the other art videos that I post during the week. And until next time, God bless you guys and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.